Well, everyone, we're in for a treat today. It's my great pleasure to uh, have another conversation with Alan Clay, who runs the Dwarf Planet University. Uh, he is much loved as a, as a brilliant teacher. But what we're talking about today is his new book, um, New Stars for a New Era. And I love the subtitle, A Consciousness Workbook for 10 new planets. And I, I think, honestly, Alan, I've, I've been reading it this weekend. I think you've done a, an absolutely brilliant job on it. And just to flatter you, um, I'd just like to talk about some of the things that I, I really loved about it. I think this is gonna be an absolute classic because it's it, it obviously can work for complete beginners, novices in astrology, mm -hmm. but also mm -hmm. old hacks like me, you know, very, experienced mm. astrologist because mm. I learned so much going through it so it's it's pioneering it's groundbreaking it's beautifully illustrated as well I loved the illustrations they were they were almost like tarot cards there was so much in each mm. of the illustrations for the dwarf plants you could have spent quite some time just looking at the um at the uh, beautiful images but it's going to be a let, lot me, let me give a plug in there for Karen La Puma Okay. Uh, the astrologer who, who created those images. Uh, she's an American astrologer. So um, you can search out her site, um, Karen Lapuma. And uh, she's she's actually very, yes, she, she does work with tarot images. Uh, and so she was creating that sort of. Yeah, yeah, I can, I can see that there's so much of the archetype that was coming through in the illustration. I, I just thought really inspired. Mm. But um, yeah, I think this will be a long term reference book for people. It will be an absolute classic. You know, we, we, it's something I'm going to be referring to a lot. And, you know, I've been around the block a couple of times. So um, and I love the way you, you talk about them as a new octave of consciousness, because that's how I think about them, too. But because you've made it a workbook, you are encouraging a conscious co-creation, because, of course, we co-create all the time. We're just not aware of it. But you are encouraging yes. that very wide wise, focused, conscious co-creation. And that will help us to, I think, upgrade to this higher state of being that we're all aiming for. So we, we and need to, I think this is the big challenge at the moment is to um, sort of bring these new consciousness energies into, into our consciousness. You know, they're there at the moment. They're acting in our lives unconsciously. And uh, they've been doing that throughout history. And now we've discovered them. We can consciously embody them we can we can and and as we do that just becoming conscious of them enables them in our lives that's the beauty of it and and so uh like in the classes that i run at the dwarf planet university there's we 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 look at the charts and so we become conscious looking at the charts but a lot of us can't really decipher charts and that's that's you know a small audience so with the book i've tried to sort of open it up to and lovely to hear that feedback to, to, to everybody so that if we're growing in consciousness, uh, we can, we can, the book is useful. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, you, you know, it's a service to humanity in that sense. It's a service to mm. humanity because there are not many of us, not many astrologers working with the, um, the Kuiper Belt objects, the dwarf planets uh, at the moment, but your book will help that spread. You know, it's, it's Absolutely. rippling out, isn't it? Um, domino effect. So, and I just love the whole way you, you constructed it because you've described the myths which are so inspiring i felt very inspired myself to kind of raise my consciousness but you also mm. as well as the optimum expression of the archetype you also shared with us the the shadow side you know it's very realistic um mm. and and mm. all of those practical i love the practical exercises you put in for each dwarf planet i thought that was brilliant to really help us connect with them to really go mm -hmm. through you know our day-to-day -day life and our day-to-day -day thinking and how are you using yeah. these these archetypes yeah. and I, I just thought that was terrific and um and also the fact that you can that's really read... kind of the, the groundbreaking one of the groundbreaking things in the book is that is that those exercises we've had gong gong conjunct saturn uh, in the sky sort of last year for you know a couple of periods and uh and this January, and uh, and I think um, consciousness exercises gong gong Saturn, and that's that's kind of where it came from. So they, I developed them last year, 
during that sat and gong gong conjunction and it's come together in this last month in, in book forms sort of thing so yes because you've got a very particular take on on gong gong haven't you alan that you particularly when it's been conjunct saturn which it just about still is now you feel that it's been very related to kind of overwhelm and restriction and and gong kun was it was a master channeler wasn't he um, but you're also seeing Gong Gong, the archetype, as being able to channel a lot of the psychic and cosmic energies that are coming in for us right now to presumably make them much more useful for us. We disappeared there for a moment, I think. Yeah, you're back. Yes. I'm back. <laughs> Where's he gone? Here we are. Gong Gong, gong and overwhelm, and suddenly it's. Yes. <laughs> Off you gong, all about channeling. He's a, he's a, he's a, was a master irrigator and channeler and so on and, and taught people how to channel energies rather than dam and block. Uh, and so um, he's at the top level, he's all about sort of being able to you know, connect with spirit energies or other energies, emotional and psychic energies. Um, he's... he's um, empathic consciousness that's how i see gong gong empathic consciousness where we can sort of feel inside another person's life and that's that's an emotional experience but it's also a psychic experience we can see the world from their eyes the world's different for everyone and so um, we kind of assume that everyone looks at it the way we do but when we've got the gong gong empathic energy um we can sort of feel inside another person's life. That's at the higher level. And as you were saying, um, so these, these outer planets, they're aspects of consciousness. And because they're aspects of, so inside Saturn, aspects of personality, the planets, and outside Saturn, aspects of consciousness. And how they manifest in our lives, therefore, depends on our current level of consciousness. Yes. So it's a, it's a, it's a very um, tableau. Um, and so at the top level, Gong Gong was very spiritual and channeling and sort of, you know, in, in contact with other realms. Um, but uh, at the unconscious level, uh, he he was a bit of an enfant terrible uh, who, who um, sort of fought heaven and started to battle with heaven in myth. And uh, because he wasn't satisfied with his lot and so on, of course, that didn't turn out very well. And so... Um, and so at the at, and, and the myths tells us a lot about the unconscious level because the myths um they carry um, um sort of information across culture and time um but uh, we have to interpret them for the new time and the new culture sort of thing and they arose at a time when most people in the world were kind of unconscious and now we're getting more and more conscious and that's that's the challenge for us in this time we're we're having to become conscious we're just we're seeing all of the you know the, the mess that's everywhere <laughs> and and realizing how much we have to grow all of us you know it's 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 a real sort of um so so that's where we are so the the so that so gong gong acts differently when we're unconscious we can get very self-involved indulge in our emotions so we can't be empathic about other people because we're just so involved in ourselves and it can be a lot of rage and then shame. It's it's that's from the myths. That's how we. Yeah, and and do you see in a mundane sense, Alan, in the myth that he was so angry he didn't get the throne that he apparently bashed his head against the Buzu Mountains and actually altered the uh, angle of the, the the sun and the moon and the stars. He actually altered the angle of the skies. I understand it in the myth. Do you see yeah. it's being linked to any? kind of extreme weather events, you know, extreme ecology change, ecological changes that we're going through now. You know, I'm thinking of Uranus in Taurus as well. Totally, totally. Yes, um, I, I, I do. Um, uh, I know, don't know that I've kind of made the link particularly, but just um, I mean, it's obviously floods um, very much gong gong experience. So, um, and there has been, you know, in different places in the world, there's been quite a bit of, of flooding in, in in the near term, um, I you know that's he's he's altering all of that sort of you know banging his head and and altering the the, the flow of the rivers and so on, 
Um, I mean, it's it's kind of violent change. It's sudden change. Um, that's that's how I read that effectively. Uh, it was change for the better in the sense that um, the rivers then could flow, uh, you know, downhill, and and so uh, that's that's why rivers, <laughs> you know, flow the way they flow in the mid. Um, and so that was the benefit of it. Um, another goddess had to come along and repair the damage that he did, and that sort of so. But that's how Chinese mythology works; that it's kind of an integrated system with the gods all working together one way or another. So I don't see um, when I when I see a myth like that that sort of um, you know seems to be talking about a lot of trouble. Um, I just read that as being the unconscious level and look for the higher side of it, basically. And and um, and the other thing, one of the other lovely things I think you've done in the book, really, I I love that, is that you've given each dwarf planet a different aspect of consciousness. You know, mm. Orcus, karmic consciousness, um, mm. Runa, mastery consciousness, mm. Eris, diversity consciousness. I just I just really loved it. You know, Varuna. Um, that was another wonderful one. Yeah, uh, Maki Maki Systems Consciousness. I, I just, yeah. I, 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 could, I could spend a lot of time with this book, and I know I will I'd keep dipping, uh, dipping back into yeah. it. So, and um, it's really given us a higher level cosmic map, I think, of where we're heading, because yeah. I say in all of my work repeatedly that the way out of this state the world is in, the only way out is to raise mm -hmm. our consciousness, to raise our frequency. Exactly. Yep, absolutely. And, and yeah. so you've made it so practical because you've given um, the explanation of the house positions so people go and, can go yeah. and find out where these dwarf planets are on their own chart. And yeah. um, also I thought the descriptions of the various well-known people who have those particular house positions really helped it come to life in each case. Yes, now, really? It's, it really, it's been quite beautiful the way it's come together. That's uh, the, 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 a lot of the examples, most of the examples went in in the last few months, sort of thing, and and that really did bring it to life. It was, yeah. it was actually, you know, um, yes, because you know, and so the house positions, um, the the outer planets, uh, we see them most clearly in our lives in the house position, uh, and so that's where it's the area of life where they're acting. And so we can, that's why those house interpretations are actually um, you know, quite meaningful. Uh, and the people, yeah, bring it to life because it's hard to sort of, otherwise it's kind of esoteric and so on. So that, yeah, the examples in the house um, interpretations and the exercises that you mentioned, those are the two ways that kind of, I think, I've, I've practicalized it in a way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you've got the inspiration of the myth at the higher consciousness expression, plus you've got the the, the practical, the grounded practicality of it. No, so uh, mm. uh, that I thought was just wonderful. You've covered all the bases. You said that Ixion was one of the most viewed in terms of um, all of the dwarf plants, and that's a personal favourite of mine, Ixion. So do you want to talk a little about Ixion, Alan? Because I just... <laughs> I've quoted often, you've probably noticed in my updates, I've quoted that your your very words of Ixion is the wild child who asked the question, mm. are the rules we are playing by the right one? The right mm. one. So, mm. uh, I, yeah, mm. I can really identify with Ixion. And, of course, Ixion's in a very strong position right now, which we can talk about as well in, in you know, geometric yeah. terms. In geometric terms, exactly. Yes, Um Seeker consciousness. I'm, I'm sort of thinking for for, for Ixion. We, his, his myth again is is kind of you know a bit shady, and and you know he's he, you know uh, so at the unconscious level uh, he can sort of encourage us to sort of follow our passion and not worry about anyone else and just think about ourselves and so on and so on. But you know there are times when we need to do that. We're actually conditioned not really to do that in our society. We're, we're conditioned to sort of play our part in the way that we said, not to follow our passion. So we we need this energy now. Yeah, the wild child, the the bad girl or the bad boy inside each of us that sort of we've locked away there and said those are things that I can't do, and and you know. Uh, and they're not like robbing banks and, you know, killing people and so on like that. They're just sort of inhibitions. You know, I can't sort of laugh in the street or I can't, you know, I mean, it's just, it's unconscious things. And and so um, 
we need to sort of let out that wild inner child and, and let that child play. I, I worked a lot as a, a clown and a clown teacher I in know. my life. <laughs> and that's, and that's um, you know, letting out the wild child to play. That's basically play is. Play is a big thing in, in a number of these new planets in terms of sort of how we approach the the divine. It's actually, you know, kind of how Mayer and Marky Marky particularly talk about sort of the playfulness is is important. And so, um, yeah, I think we we often get, you know, we're beyond the Saturn and the and the, and the Neptune sort of strictness and sort of um, and and we need to sort of and 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 Exion is the first one after. So Exion, Orcus, and Pluto are um, brothers. They're in the same orbit. They're yep. all in resonance with Neptune. So, um, uh, so they're spiritual. Uh, and um, Exion's sort of like the first one after Pluto, we can think. So it, it, there's an authenticity there that we have to, you know, Pluto, we, we, um, the ego dissolves. You know, traditionally, uh, we sort of, you know, uh, can find the spiritual through the dissolving of the ego, but we, we need to be authentic in that process. So that's the axioms there to make us sort of help us sort of find an authenticity in our um, in ourselves, in our being. So we're happy who, being who we are. Now, the other side of axion is that um, we have to be sensitive to the unspoken agreements in our lives the spoken and the unspoken agreements. And there's lots of unspoken agreements where we're, um, you know, just agreeing unconsciously with people to do, you know, not to see things. And, you know, we walk down the street, we don't look at the people in the eyes, we don't smile at them, we don't sort of touch them. We, it's, it's, it's all about, I mean, some cultures we do, uh, it's different for each culture. But so Exion can sort of, we need to be sensitive to those um, unspoken agreements so we can know how far to go in, in our authenticity you know it's challenging for some people that we are authentically who we are and so it's it's so that we can go up to the boundary and and you know and uh, and just if we want to push a little bit we can go a little bit further and that's what the clown does I'm going to suggest I've got Exion in the 10th house and I enjoy going out in the street and teasing people. <laughs> because, um, that's, You've lived out your Ixion very fully. So, but, <laughs> but, but actually, I mean, I think Ixion is expressing very strongly in society right now because in the myth he murdered his father-in-law and Zeus gave him a second chance and then he tried to rape Zeus's wife. So he blotted totally. his book so badly he was eventually spun off on a on a burning wheel into eternity i think and you know that mm. lack of moral compass that lack of mm -hmm. any uh accountability or sensibility i think it it, it has and it's is fine. expressed very strongly in society however yeah. the other side of it the kind of rebound is mm. okay i'm gonna you know again your words alan i'm gonna go off and 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 find um my joy find my bliss mm. through awesome yeah. authenticity and simplicity and mm. it's it's weaving your own path and I think so many people are doing that, you know, that getting on yeah. a passionate spiritual mission, but it isn't mm. just service to self. It actually mm. also encompasses service to others. And I think that's the yeah. big divide, another big divide mm. in society right now. So I personally love Ixion because unless we get in touch with that sense of <clears throat> personal joy and authenticity, mm. we're never going to live our lives to the full. No, that's right. So yes, I think exactly. Ixion holds great promise. And I love that you called um, Ixion seeker consciousness mm. as well, because so many mm. of us are really getting on that spiritual path in a much bigger way mm. than I think we ever have in our lives right now. Yes. And yes. Ixion, so if... yeah, go ahead. <laughs> well, I was just going to point out the, with the consciousness, so the, the Neptunian consciousness that we've developed. In the last 200 years, we found uh, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. So that's intuitive consciousness, spiritual consciousness, psychological consciousness. And yes, that, that discovery of Neptune and spiritual consciousness, which has taken us out of the kind of religion area of, 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 uh, of spirituality, um, is really... We're, we're at a real flowering point now where, where we're because with the discovery of these new planets where we're just sort of and people are um yes feeling that we we realize as we become conscious we realize that there's quite a lot of work to do 
and that the more of us doing it, the better it is. And so I'm just amazed in the classes how actually everyone's working, not just for themselves, but for others in the way you were just mentioning. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think, I think yeah. it's an essential part of where we're going, really. It's part of this shift into more Aquarian energy as well. That mm. This sort of slight paradox that although we have a greater sense of our unique essence, we also have mm. a greater sense of contributing that to the whole, to the community. Yes. Um, yes. And, and finding our, our soul tribe or coming together in a physical community in some way. I mean, that's going to, mm. that's really accelerating right now, but it's interesting mm. because, because Ixion is in, in, in strong geometry at the moment, mm. isn't it sort of, Square to Selassia, mm -hmm. opposing Maki Maki, um, mm -hmm. conjunct Kwawa. So mm -hmm. that's quite a bundle to talk about. But is there anything you'd like to to share about? Say in there. Well, the, the Exion Kwawa conjunction, which is fairly wide, I think maybe five degrees or something at the moment, um, has been going on for the better part of sort of 50 years or 40 years or something like that, and coming together and going apart. And so that's very, um, it's a signature of the times. It's a generational aspect. Um, and um, we are needing that. So uh, so we've talked about Exion. So, so Kwawa is um, uh, bringing spirit into matter through a practice. Yeah. Uh, it, 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 you know, yoga, meditation, these are traditional ones. But anything can be a uh, uh, a practice by which we bring spirit into matter. And that's what Kwawa, in myth, Kwawa is, um, sings and dances the world into existence. And that's just a beautiful sort of way for it to, <laughs> to come into existence, I think. And and it's a creative way. And and uh, I see Kwawa as actually the higher octave of Jupiter. So um, where the... Um, so the higher octave is a more spiritual expression of of that inner planet energy, and uh, where Jupiter is kind of dumb luck, kind of you know, um, the uh, Kwawa is kind of smart luck. Um, Kwawa is, is singing and dancing. It's a dynamic meditation uh, which creates the world, which creates our reality. We bring spirits into our reality, and, and that kind of energizes it and creates our reality. Um, gives it life um, and and um, so we've got those two together which is an authentic practice of bringing spirit into matter and and so it's it's a unique one so we're each sort of working to find this 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 new way of, of being spiritual of practicing spirit uh, here on the planet and I, and just to so just to interject as well, Anna, I love the way you've um, <clears throat> embedded Kwawa in community. That you come together mm. in community to sing and dance. Mm. And I always mm. think of the Sufi dancers creating this vortex exactly. of energy, this light exactly. spinning to create yes. something at a higher level. So I think you've you've yes. done that beautifully. Yeah, I think I, I, you know you think of, of Kwawa as being a Sufi dance of jupiter um, you know it's you, you you're sort of doing a sufi dance and and in that there is it's meditative and you can i mean in the old sufi dances i'm not sure how aware of the surroundings they were as they were dancing they may have been internal but um but we in our lives can can do a sufi dance where we're sort of seeing what's happening around us so we see the opportunities and we can act on them in real time this is why it's like smart luck right so that's that's, that's how and then and and then um both of them squaring selassia mm. as well and selassia opposite maki maki yes so the square to selassia um selassia is is new for me and and wonderful i'm just i'm just loving selassia um she's she's um she's approachable she's she's um appealing she's she's got a lovely energy which um interfaces kind of between us and others um and um and she brings true love into our lives uh, at the top level so i mean what's not to like she's <laughs> she's got you know <laughs> but, um but, you know, she's also where we get the word salacious from and so on. So she's got all of that sort of, you know, at the unconscious level where we're sort of, oh, let's play with the sort of the, the, you know, the juices that, uh, the, 
that that are around in life. I mean, I look at her as being, uh, you know, I've developed this higher octave sort of framework for, for, to explain the dwarf planets. Yes. Uh, and I, I kind of only recently slotted in Celestia. Uh, and so I look at her as being the higher octave of Venus and Mars combined. Yes. Where, and that's kind of a weird thing, but, you know, to, to say. But, but Venus and Mars... It's relationships, it's sex, it's, it's, it's that sort of interaction on an energy level um, between people. And that's what she really talks about at a more spiritual level. So, so at, at the higher uh, level for her, she's got sort of a psychic contact with, with people, uh, with another, with, with, with somebody, um, with any other sort of, or I don't know, yes, probably any other. Um, yeah, and Gong Gong, I see, as being the higher octave of Celestia, where that sort of contact is actually taken into a much sort of deeper and more channeled, um, powerful experience, actually. Yeah, I, yeah. with Celestia, I, um, I, um, for me, I associate her, associate her with photonic light because mm. she's linked to the shimmering sunlight and moonlight on the sea, she's mermaid yes. energy. And we yes. know as human beings, we're liquid crystals, in fact, and we're being upgraded mm. by the photonic light. Mm. Um, mm. And I see mm. that mm. very high frequency kind of shimmering, sparkling light as mm. being very linked to Celestia as well. So I think Absolutely. there's something yeah. about our upgrade, but also our, our creation as liquid crystals that comes into mm. the archetype potentially as well. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's that's I think probably where the the challenge there's a challenge uh, that square between um, Quawa and, and Ixion and Celestia. There's a challenge coming there for for us probably to to do that upgrade to actually sort of take that energy to the higher level um, in that sort of authentic dance song and dance that we're doing in the world um, and uh, and. So opposition to Marky Marky pull in there and it's it's a T square altogether. Um so Marky Marky is the uh, higher octave of Uranus, the sort of the 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 meaning that we give to the ideas and the network that we're part of. We, we that sort of it all makes sense to us in a particular way. Uh, and 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 we're part of it. And it, it, it you know, um, so it's, it's, Marky Mark is talking about the, the, our model of the world, the way we sort of understand who we are and where we are, and you know, so very important in this, you know, this new stars for a new era um, concept that I've got here. The Marky Mark is kind of actually giving us the, the bigger picture and it's not a sort of a picture that we can oversee so much as it's a fractal picture where we can see all of the detail and each detail represents each other piece and so on so it's it's more of a so there's an opposition between Celestia and and um Maki Maki so that's saying um well the understanding that we've got of the world, how is that working with our approachability, with our contact with others? Um, are we, are we, you know, being energized by that? Are we, do we hide from contact with others? Probably our Maki Maki is feeling a bit sort of, sort of stifled and not getting enough energy. Are we getting sort of, you know, uh, sucked away in our Celestia contact where we're sort of, you know, playing games rather than connecting with people um you know um, and and are we as you were saying sort of lifting our energy to so Celestia was was um you know, the wife of neptune in this and she she um, when he proposed she she slid away into the the depths and and sort of hid because she thought oh no um i don't want to um you know, marry you um, and uh so she's also but she got you know he convinced her he sent it sent his favorite dolphin down and, and they did a negotiation and and she became a goddess so it was a good deal and the goddess sort of you know um uh she she rules the the 
um, sparkling surface waters, as you were saying, but she also rules the depths where she was hiding. Uh, and so she's got that whole depth of emotion uh, that she connects us with. And um, and so we that's that's the with that opposition, we're kind of playing in that. Do we play on the in the light filled water or are we playing in the depths? Uh, and how is that? with the opposition to Maki Maki influencing our view of the world and our sense of what we're doing in that. And of course, goes up to the T point of the T square, uh, which is the Ixion Kwawa. So so the, the way the way to deal with it is to find a unique spiritual practice um, that that you know, brings spirit into matter and and enables us to sort of have our contact with others and and also make sense of it and feel comfortable in that process and and with maki maki um alan because i've also been inspired by kelly hunter and also alison chester lambert who i'm speaking to next month in fact um do you see maki maki as any uh, connection to all the ecological disaster but then uh, recovery on Easter Island because mm. that was historically recorded wasn't it that it was down to a yeah. population at some point of 111 residents through you know the European uh, sailors arriving and pillaging the land and bringing disease and there was ecological disaster but then yeah. they regenerated themselves so it's quite yeah. close to Homer in some ways that very strong yeah. sense of regeneration and apparently on Easter Island there's something very specific in the soil. I think it's called rapamycin, which yes. um, scientists are now studying because they think it brings um, longevity um, wow. and wow. can regenerate your health. So, you know, all of that mm. is very interesting with the Aquarian energy mm. and living longer and healthier and where we're going. Mm. So mm. do you see that link with Maki Maki and Definitely. East Island and the regeneration as well? Absolutely, yes. Maki Maki tunes us into the life cycle. That we're part of a cycle it's not yeah. a sort of a, you know we we live in the moment or you know i, I don't know <laughs> you know I, i'm always encouraging people to live in the moment because then we can you know make the most out of the moment um but the, each moment is part of a process now that's the salathia perspective salathia sees the process and and can make a uh, can choose the best time for any part of that process to be enacted. Um, and and yes, um, you know it's it, it's a cycle. It's a life cycle actually. And if you you know in myths, uh, Maki Maki taught taught the islanders um, that you know they couldn't eat all the birds' eggs because they then they wouldn't have any birds <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, so, um, and we really are in a kind of a place in the world at the moment where some of us don't seem to understand that you know and and they're just ripping off whatever they can rip off and sort of and and destroying you know but we're coming you know climate change is forcing us to come to a more collective understanding about living together and that's all part of the same thing and maki maki uh coming in there so that we we do get that big picture and that's that's and we can sort of make sense of it and and decide how to nurture you know yeah. how me is all about nurturing um the the the, the bounty uh and 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 maki maki is all about nurturing the the life cycle so how me brings in rebirth into there so it's even longer than maki maki's cycle is kind of actually even longer Yes, and, and uh, Homer is another uh, one um, that I, I is a real favourite because there's so many aspects to her myth, aren't there? There's the the creativity, the regeneration, birthing babies from all over her body and regenerating herself from an old crone to a young maiden, which is going to come in handy. Um, but there's also a <laughs> goddess side that she birthed the islands of Hawaii. Mm, and and apparently she's also got another aspect to the myth, and I'm sure I'm sure you know this, Alan, that um uh that her her husband, her partner, had had taken some bananas from the land for the family mm. to eat, and he was mm. arrested and he was going to be put to death by the authoritarian mm. leader because apparently mm. only the elite had the choice of the best food, um mm. and uh, Homea um with no army managed mm. to summon her community and her spiritual help and overcome the, the authoritarian leader 
and that yes. seems to resonate <laughs> very much in our times. Oh, so Unity, yes. you know, spiritual community, spiritual assistance, and and where we're yes. headed in community. Yes, absolutely. That we can that we can connect with the oneness of of life of humanity, and 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 in that oneness we feel a psychic um, sort of energy that just flows into the world and energizes us. Uh, so that it, you know, how many is the magic of life? Uh, that, that we can feel in each moment as we feel that sort of I'm alive and it's just sort of you know magical yeah uh, that's 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 her power uh, she's the higher octave of of, of Neptune and Neptune um, is, has a psychic opening and and how Maya connects us with a deep psychic connection to the soul level where we can sort of really feel that we are supported and we are loved, and 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 we are we are all one. In fact, it's not like we are struggling, uh, you know, against one another. Although that's how it looks. It's 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 just well, a lot of us are struggling against one another, but in fact, uh, we are all one. And 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 if we can see it that way, then we can really see how how we're all helping one another. Even you know, the wars and whatever else, it's actually helping. And we just have to sort of see it in the way that, um, all right, well, everyone needs a different, um, you know, learning experience uh, to, to get through this this new phase that we're in. Yeah, you absolutely. Know, I, I, and and I, she had a very shamanic aspect as well, didn't she? She had an instinctive understanding of, the, of nature and the earth mm. and could uh, bring... Mm. She could summon wild food with her magic stick, the makalai, and um, you know. So she she's so tuned into the earth, and and to me, these these wonderful archetypes help us remember perhaps better. Uh, you, can we say better? But you know, more beautiful civilizations like Lemuria mm. that lived in this state of oneness. That we are. Th th this is all just one consciousness, as we know. We're just in the flow yeah. of consciousness, and what the dwarf planet seem to be doing is helping us advance in terms of a kind of leading edge quantum physics understanding of reality and manifestation mm. but helping mm. us remember all mm. of this knowledge that we still have embedded in us from yeah. those ancient times and particularly Lemuria I think is, is, a, is a good example of that yeah yeah exactly just tapping no, into I, that ancient knowledge the Another one way that we sort of read the meaning of these new planets is to look at discovery events, and, and many astrologers talk about the tsunami that happened uh, two days before Haumea was discovered as being sort of significant. And, you know, a lot of people died in the tsunami, but no animals died because the animals all they knew. sensed the earthquake early and ran in land. Uh, and and so we need to learn, she's teaching us, we need to learn to read the signs, to tune in, to not to be sort of stuck in our own, you know, life pattern that we that we tend to sort of, you know, feel comfortable in. And, and, uh, and yeah, I think so the animals she, are way ahead of us, Alan. <laughs> well, that's it. They are. They're, they're just actually more sensitive. You know, yep. we, we've kind of Connected. forgotten. In the same way that you're talking about, we have to remember the sort of oneness. Uh, yes, we 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 also have to remember that sort of connection with nature, and and how sensitive, how that supports us. Actually, that sensitivity. Uh, it's not sort of, it's not extra. It's not dangerous. It's actually a, a help to be uh, sensitive to to where we are and what what energies are happening around us yeah mm -hmm. and it's in a long-term square certainly all this year and i think into next um it's in a long-term let me see op opposition isn't it? a long-term opposition to pluto right now um, so two two of square. square square sorry yes yeah, square and yeah, square. in a long-term quincunx to sedna so sedna uh and That's so, a very interesting configuration, isn't it? Because it's talking about deep transformation, metamorphosis, death, rebirth, mm. but also regeneration. Mm, mm, totally, totally. I think it's it's yes, it's 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 the signature of, of the decade. Uh, we're really being sort of um, 
mm, strong armed <laughs> by by that uh, those transits into a whole new way of, of being in the world. I think Pluto's just gone into um, Aquarius. We've talked about that a lot, people, uh, and so on. Um, um, Sedna's just gone into Gemini, um, and Halmea's just gone into Scorpio. So they've all changed sign. Uh, and when the outer planets change sign, that's when we really feel them because we we get used to them being in a sign, and we kind of we kind of forget them. We kind of they become unconscious, uh, and so and then they change sign, and suddenly we're sort of oh my god, oh my god. So um, you know, Sedna's gone into Gemini. What our soul really wants to do uh, in this in this life. Uh, Said no, 11,406 year orbit. So uh, our life, just one little bit. But if we uh, believe that we are uh, reincarnated uh, over a period of lifetimes, then that's kind of that whole cycle. And our soul sort of in each lifetime wants to grow in a certain way. It's not a random experience. And um, so uh, the Sedna placement in our chart tells us what our soul really wants to do. Uh, and so Sedna has been in, in Taurus uh, for 55 years or something. And so we've all kind of been exploring what's really of value and, and materialism and spirituality. And, um, uh, but more the materialism than the spirituality. I mean, that's come in through the value side of it. Uh, more and more of us are going, ah. It's actually spirituality that's valuable. And now Sedna has gone into Gemini. That's consciousness. That's kind of, you know, um, sort of working with the mind and with thinking and, and so on. That's what consciousness is. Um, and um, discovery event, uh, when Sedna was discovered, neural networks were discovered. And so um, Very interesting. neural networks, the basis of um, AI. Uh, and so Sedna's gone to Gemini and everyone's like, AI, 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 AI. So this is going to be the challenge for humanity over the next yeah, for sure. you know, uh, 40, 50 years of Sedna and Gemini. Um, and we are going to have to learn to live with a new conscious life form on the planet and um I, I i i you know i know that's a challenging way to to sit, to talk about it but i think that's what ai is effectively we're we're birthing a new life form and i suggest it will be a conscious life form neural networks are based on our lives uh our brains and so ai will be conscious and spirituality is a natural product of consciousness is my argument and so uh AI will be spiritual. So I don't think we need to fear the Terminator type thing with AI, but it's a huge change happening. And that, that's just with the chat GPT. You know, everyone's saying, oh, well, what about the kids in school? Are they going to sort of all, you know, con, con, and con the teachers sort of getting their assignments in and getting them done? But of course they will. That's part of, you know, but it's like using uh, a calculator when they first came in to do your maths. It didn't sort of, it's just a tool. And uh, so, you know, we just need to rise to the occasion and sort of see the spiritual benefit because AI will, will take over all of our work. And so we have a lot of time to do other stuff. And that's, I yeah. think, going to be a huge consciousness growth just in itself that yeah. we realise. And it's very reinforced by Pluto and Aquarius too, of course, isn't it? You've totally, exactly. Got the two together. Really, so in this long-term yeah. trine, I think for several years, haven't you? Yes, uh, the right. next few years. So that's incredibly powerful. For that. But it's so interesting what you're saying, Alan, about when Sedna was discovered, that was the discovery of the neural network. Because I'm sure mm -hmm. you've seen images, they're in Professor Robert Temple's book, of if we take a, a, an image of the neural network and equally take a, an image of, of the galactic superhighways, they're identical it's just fractal wow. yes it's just yes. fractal yeah. and so it's so interesting and so along mm. with the ai i think we are gonna and this was really i think what you were referring to with maki maki too and it's going to be very strong with pluto and aquarius and very strong with jupiter um conjunct uranus in april that we are going to be discovering so much more about the out there there's going to be a whole mm. new 
level or layer of understanding about the cosmos, the galaxies, how everything operates, how we are an integral part of that one flowing consciousness. And that's going to be incredibly exciting. And that's coming down the track right now. Um, we can feel it. <laughs> it's kind of, yeah, this new physics of consciousness, physics of creation, how we create our reality. You know, it's this Saturn in Pisces blend of science and spirituality that we can now use science much more thoroughly to understand mm. spirituality, which isn't in any way discounting spirituality. I mean, that's what that's right. what you know we are. We're made of love, as it were, but it's mm. given scientific underpinning through physics, and that's, that's why I'm very excited about a lot of the new work that's happening in that in that field as mm. well. Absolutely. So, um, I think we're kind of, I think spiritual um, spirituality is infusing science too. I think science is changing as a result. You know? So that's, that's blend. very good. And that's all part of this, as you say, Pluto and Aquarius and Sedna in, in, in Gemini. Yeah, working together. Absolutely. And also yeah. Sedna is coming to, gradually it's coming to its closest point in the to the earth, isn't it? And in 2075, and that seems like, you know, an eon away, but if you've got an 11,400 year orbit, it's actually much closer Very than close. we've ever known it in many yeah. lifetimes. So, and because yeah, yeah. it's bringing information from the, what, the edge of the Oort cloud, isn't it? The very yeah. high then that's there's it. new information coming in for us as humanity to upgrade us that's as it. well. That's it. So she has a, a an elliptical orbit, like a comet, and way out there at one point and close in at another. So yes, we're we're so lucky uh, that we're we're alive in this period where she's at the close point because a lot of change is going to come on. Yes, the the Neolithic Revolution. Uh, last time she was here. Um, uh, huge change. We all over the planet. We stopped hunting animals and we started growing gardens, and um, so and that enabled us, gave us free time uh, because we, you know, hunting animals was time consuming, and uh, we could we were just surviving up until that point. And suddenly we could grow more food than we needed. It meant people could specialize, and all of our civilization has come from that point. So we're at a point now where. We're at a huge turning point. That's what the AI is. It's actually a, a huge turning point where the next 10,000 years of, of humanity development is being set up in a new way. Um, where we, I mean, that's just amazing, isn't it? That, you know, and her myth was about her father chopping off her fingers, and so she had to surrender all of mm. the old ways of security and the betrayal by the mm. patriarchy, you know, father didn't mm. come out of it that well, um, but a complete metamorphosis to birth beautiful new sea creatures like whales. And totally. Whales. totally. So it, it not only is it is it Sedna's position and that long-term trying to um, Pluto and the quincux to Homer, um, but the fact that so many of the dwarf planets are in very um, tight geometry to each other and they've got round about, you know, 300-year orbits, that's remarkable. Mm -hmm. And also the mm -hmm. fact over the next three years, all the outer planets, the old bread and butter traditional outer planets are, are changing sign as well. So it is mm -hmm. a massive pivot point, isn't it, in human history mm -hmm. that we're going through right it now? Is, it is. Huge. And we, 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 we're kind of seeing it in the world, I think, at the moment. You know, the pandemic started the process and now we're... We've kind of been expecting it to kind of settle down after the pandemic, but I don't think it has. I think we're kind of revving still, up. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's still revving up. That's right. Uh, yeah, Uranus is is going to go into Gemini and and conjunct Sedna in in a couple of years, uh, and I think that's going to be the kind of consciousness explosion uh, point where we 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 you know just in the way sort of AI has, has kind of really hit us in the face in the last sort of year, the last six months. Um, there's going to be another big change in, in a couple of years as you're on this, it's said. Um, so do you see really... that as a lot more galactic connection back to our galactic family, Alan, as well? It's you know, sort of Gemini communication, Uranus, the galactics. You know, yes. I, I see that as, as yes. a much closer recognition and, again, remembrance of who we really are as galactic beings. Well, that's right, and it, it 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 could come in that form that we actually connect with galactic beings, and you know, it's 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 yes, we're in an exciting time. We're we're much more is possible than we have in, imagined than we have thought in the past, and we can we can envisage ourselves and our world in a in a new way where we can really sort of 
you know, and it's it it's all consciousness that enables that actually. Actually, so um, yeah. Um, so I, I, sorry, Alan, go ahead. I, uh, uh, and so that's what I'm I'm sort of aiming the book at in the sense is that is is you know raising our consciousness, uh, giving us a guide to raising our consciousness and using these different new consciousness energies. And the more spiritual, I think, you know, through, as you read the examples in the, in the um, house interpretations, it's pretty obvious that the more spiritually we approach these um, new planets, the 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 better our our lives go. Yeah. Uh, and so it's it's not a sort of a it, well, it may be a, a devotional work to do the spiritual work, but uh, we um, it's not a hard work. It's actually a fun work, and it's it's. Uh, it, you know, much more is possible than than we than we imagine, and it, but it's not hard to do it. So it's not hard to understand it and to enable these energies. That's that's what I um, want to get across, particularly. But you know, you know, we see it in the students at the uni. It's just being conscious of them that enables them in your life. You don't have to be a yogi in the cave for ten years to sort of make it happen. You, you have to still bring that same yogic approach to it uh, in your life and enable them in your life and see them. We're kind of afraid to see them a lot of the time. And so we just don't look and we're more comfortable sort of, you know, but now we're in a period where the more we do embrace these things, um, the better. Can I can I get in a word here about the free giveaway? Because uh, rather than yes. sort of leaving it to the end, because some people may um, sort of not listen to the end. Um, the book is available free, guys. Go and get it from Amazon straight away as as a, a download. Uh, we, we for the next few days it's going to be free. Um, and the deal is, if you like it, tell a friend, write a review. We're trying to get the word of mouth going, and we want to get it out there as much as possible. So um, you know, you probably want to buy the paperback in the long term, just because uh, you know it's uh, we're still old fashioned in that way, but. I encourage you do the download, even though it may be hard, but because that way you'll get a chance to look at it and um, and decide if you want to buy the paper. Yeah, I really recommend it. Whatever level of astrology you're at, I think this is a terrific book, and it's really going to open up the the knowledge about the dwarf plants, which is so exciting. You know, that's that's mm. where we're headed in consciousness. And just mm. to say, Alan, you've referred to it a couple of times, but I love. And you wrote an article on this, I know, a couple of years ago, but I love the way that you have kind of categorized um, a lot of these dwarf planets as a, as a higher octave. So we've got Moon, mm. Ceres, Sedna, because mm. there's a theme running through that of, of, of nurturing and Mercury, Uranus, mm. Maki, Maki, very much connected to the mind, Venus, Neptune, mm. Homer, you know, I can see all that divine feminine side, Mars, exactly. Pluto, Eris, that's a more, you know, warrior side of us, spiritual mm. warrior. Jupiter Quawa mm. that you've mentioned, Saturn Varuna, another wonderful mm. planet, um, mm. and the, the the Venus Mars Salacia uh, Gong Gong that you mentioned too. I just think that was a really clever way to look at them because it it helps to reinforce the themes and mm. and the upstep, as it were, with with each of mm. them as we as we shift in consciousness. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. Varuna is 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 the last one that we haven't really. Um, discussed and that's mastery mm. consciousness and mm. you know mm. i i love that because i think that is a big part of where we're going self-sufficient mastery mm. because yes. the more we can master our our thinking and our frequency the more we can just control our own reality to to a to a large extent i believe but the more we are also mm. helping the collective absolutely it isn't yes. just about us it's about okay what are we doing you know what's the service to others as well so, so um, Varuna is is about sovereignty, uh, sort of Varuna higher octave of Saturn, Saturn controlling and 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 sort of structuring and organizing to 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 do that ruling to keep you know sort of to be the the leader. Um, whereas Varuna, it's it, yes, it's mastery um, consciousness, and we get a mastery by by just by doing our, our devotion uh, and and over time we get good at it because we just do it and, and that's what we're devoted to and so and and there's a mastery there now so that's a that's that's a sovereignty that we're getting and sovereignty is a dance between um our 
ourselves and the collective, as yep. you were just describing, where we have to sort of go, I can do this, um, you know, I'm a master of this, whatever it is, and we're all a master of something. And so, you know, and you know, it, there are people who 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 look to us for 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 for, for some answers, yeah. uh, and that's where our mastery is. And and so we have to say, I can do this to the world, and the world has to say, yes, I will. I you do that for me, <laughs> and and that is the dance of sovereignty that each of us have to do. And some of us are shy to sort of say, I can do this. And and some of us are shy to sort of call the the, the support uh, that's you know, the audience, the the customers. Um, that um, but it's a dance, and in that process, uh, we find a, a devotion which enables over time that mastery. Yeah, yeah. So. I I think it was just beautifully, and and also um, just the way you've expressed that that you know the that we become conscious of our inner authority and we clearly mm. see the results of our karma and dharma our dharma mm. what we are meant to become how we are meant to blossom in this particular life so mm. i just think it's been really beautifully done and, and many congratulations to you you can take well, a breath so now good. i think with uh, it's, such a, it's such a it's such a it's it's releasing um I, you know all of that sort of focus that i was putting into creating it and so on where each morning I would get up and sort of, you know, get something done. And I thought, yes, that's, you know. And now I'm just like, wow, that's, that's, I did it. <laughs> it it has been a service to humanity. I, I really, I really mean that. So it's so beautiful to hear you say that. I think, I think, yes, I, people are saying it's, it's special. And I think, I think it is, it's, it, we've been waiting for this book, actually. I think we've, we've, we've been waiting for someone to write this book. And so, yeah, beautiful. Bless you. Anything else you'd like to add, Alan, before we close? Just uh, encourage people, if you, um, the Dwarf Planet University, search for it. Uh, go to dwarfplanet.university. Um, I'll put and, the link below. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, and sign up for my newsletter if you want to um, sort of get, get a newsletter about this. We are, I'm kind of educating uh, each week or two as I sort of sell the classes um, and so uh, that way you can sort of get and you might like to take some classes that's all good but the book is is not sort of it's it's for everyone so it's not just for the people who want to take classes so. yeah that's uh, that's one of the great things about it so um, but as I say people rave about Alan being a wonderful teacher I'll put the links below so you can get in touch directly so Alan thank you so much for your time thank you for your your mm -hmm. wonderful work in the world and it's very special there are not many people doing this so um, God bless you and uh, and thank you for sparing the time today it's been wonderful thank talking you. to you I love talking with you Ben thank you for all of your work you do such beautiful work and uh, we all appreciate it Thank you so much. Love to everybody out there and uh, go get the book. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Get the free one. Go for it now. <laughs> Amazon. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Bye for now. Bye-bye.